Now in this video, I will show you how to use spherical coordinates to find volume of solid region bounded you know, by some surfaces. Okay. In this case, uh, our solid is bounded above by this sphere, you know, center at the origin, and then radius equal to six. And then here below, uh, you know, by this z equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. So suppose you forget, right? Uh, uh, you forget about this. Sphere is easy, but what is this? So, uh, you know, <clears throat> in order to see the graph of this uh, surface, uh, suppose I, I, I put z, y equal to zero. So I have z equal to square root of x squared, okay? So if I put z equal to square root of x squared, that is just absolute x. So uh, that means, you know, on x or z plan, uh, you know, you have some straight lines over there. And then similarly, you can put x equal to zero, and you can see z equal to y square, and square root y square would be you know absolute of y, right? You know, if we suppose x and y are not negative, so you see z equal to x and z equal to y. So z equal to x on x or z plane, and z equal to y on y or z plane. So basically, <clears throat> from there you can see this is the straight line, right? That is z equal to y, and this is z equal to to the x on x o z and then on y o z. So basically, this is some code, right? Some code. Some code. <clears throat> All right. So our region, our, our solid looks like this. So you have code, right? And that code, you know, intersect with sphere somewhere in here. Okay. So we have to find the volume of this part. Okay. You know, in this case. Spherical coordinates are extremely useful because our region, if you write this, you know, uh, if you write the formula, you, you use triple integral. So the region of integration is a part of a sphere. It's a part of a sphere. So in that case, spherical coordinates are very useful. And let's remind you about spherical coordinates, right? What's that? So you have different, different methods to Ident, uh, identify a point in the space. The first we use x, o, y, x, y, and z, right? x, y, and z. And the second one you use, you know, r cosine of phi, r uh, sine of phi, r uh, of theta, and then, you know, z. And this is called cylindrical coordinate. Uh, if you consider like theta, you know, is the angle between this, this line, right, and x axis. Now here's the point, so you find an orthogonal projection of that point on x or y plane, right? And then you connect with the origin, and this is the angle theta. And the angle between this vector and z is called phi, right? And then rho is the distance, I mean, in the norm of that vector. So in that case, you have uh, another system of coordinate, which is, you know, r sine of phi, cosine of theta, and then I would write r sine of phi and sine of theta, and then, oh, we don't have r here, we have rho, right? We have rho in here, we have rho in here, and then rho sine of phi. So, uh, if you change like that, right, instead of uh, r, phi, and z, you would have uh, rho, phi, and theta. Or you, you can write rho, theta, phi, right? So that is spherical coordinate. Okay, so let's use triple integral to find the volume of this solid. And we'll see. <coughs> First, I have to I have to, 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 to determine the range, right? You know, the range how uh, phi, theta, and rho change, okay? So if our solid looks like this, right? So here is phi. You can see, in order to find this angle, right, you, you, phi, phi will go from where? Go from zero to the maximum of this angle. So that means we have to find this point and this point, and to find the maximum of that, okay? That's the first thing about phi. And about theta, uh, if, you, so if you find projection of this part, right, of this intersection onto x or y plane, you can find, you know, the range of theta. So basically, if you put, uh, if you square this, equation, you would get z squared equal to x squared plus y squared, right? So from here, you can write uh, x squared plus y squared plus 
x squared plus y squared equal to 36. That means x squared plus y squared equal to 36 over 2, right, which is 18. So basically, uh, on x or y plane, you have some circle. You have some circle. If you have a circle right there, that means theta will go from 2, a 0 to 2 pi. That makes sense? All right, so uh, we have to find this number, right, later. Uh, let's clarify about rho. What is rho? Rho, you, you take any point here, you pick any point here, you draw the distance, right, from that point to the origin. So basically, rho is inside that cone, and of course, inside the sphere. So it means rho will go from 0 to, to the r, to the radius of that uh, sphere, which is 6. Okay, so let's find uh, the phi in here. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I have to find, uh, you know, uh, the intersection uh, of these two surfaces. So let me erase this. <clears throat> Fz squared equals x squared plus y squared. So here I, I can find z. I can find z. So instead of x squared plus y squared, I write z squared plus z squared equal to 36. From here I get z squared equal to 18, right? Equal to 18. <clears throat> so z is equal to, you know, Take square of it, you get I get three square of two. <clears throat> but what is z? In spherical coordinates, z is equal to rho, you know, equal to rho uh, times um, sine of pi, right? You know, in this case, if, I, if, if this is our z, right? Because z is on the intersection, so I put z equal to this, uh, equal to three square of two in here. So uh, what is rho for this part? Rho for this part is equal to 6, right? It's equal to 6. Equal to 6. You see? So from here, I get 6 sine of 5, where 5 is the maximum angle in here. So from there, I get sine of 5 is equal to 3 square root of 2 over, over 6, which is square root of 2 over 2. Uh, so from here, I can find 5, you know, is outside of this guy. Outside of this guy is just, you know, pi over 4. So from here, I can find the range of 5. So 5 would go from 0 to pi over 4. Now I have all information for my triple integral. Okay? So let's write the triple integral and evaluate that integral. <coughs> I will erase this. <coughs> So my integral looks like this, looks like this, looks like this, and then the rho, the r, and then a note, uh, maybe the theta, and then I would use d phi, you know, and then d theta. So theta will go from two, 0 to 2 pi, from 0 to 2 pi, and then phi, I know that phi go from 0 to pi over 4, and then rho will go from 0 to 6, right? But again, don't forget Jacobian in this case. So Jacobian in this case is equal to rho psi square, psi square of phi. And you know how, how to find Jacobian is, you know, we, we have to find all partial derivatives, right? Of, well, you know, x and y and z with respect to rho and phi and theta and then you find the determinant of that, you get exactly rho size squared phi. And in this case, you see, we can separate in here rho, rho, size square phi, right? So basically, you don't have any theta in this case, so I can write, yes, that is product of three integrals, 0 to 2 pi d theta, and 0 to pi over 4, here with respect to phi, half size square phi, d phi, and then, you know, integral from 0 to 6, Zero. So you know, just evaluate. This guy is easy, it's just 2 pi, this guy is just 6, right? And this guy, you can use double angle formula to evaluate that, uh, which is, uh, you know, cos of 2 phi equal to 1 minus 2 sine square of phi. So you use this formula, you know, you go from sine square to cos of 2 phi, and then uh, use substitution to evaluate that integral. And the answer for this is equal to 7, divide 2 minus square root of 2, and pi. So I, I will leave this for you because that is just calculus 1.
all right thank you for watching